Thank you. Well, thank you. The, uh, it's an honor to be here, and it's been an honor to serve as part of Balakatan 39, also known as Balakatan 24. I had the humble privilege of being the Joint Task Force Commander, and I would like to say a special thanks to a few people before we start this off. Number one, to our great partners, the AFP. So Major General Likudini, thank you, sir, uh, for your support. Thank you for your leadership. I'd also like to thank my counterpart, the awesome U.S. and Philippine JTF Commander, Lieutenant General Cordura, uh, who's been just a tremendous partner and stride by stride, step by step. We've made great gains in interoperability and lethality across all the domains that we may find ourselves employing. Just one last closing comment before we, I look forward to your questions is, I meant what I said earlier. It's no coincidence that as democratic nations, the values we share are even rooted in our respective national anthems. Talks about heroes, talks about those that are brave, talks about defending freedom, and it talks about defending shores, our respective shores from external attackers. I could not be more proud of the men and women who were in the field, who were in the operational planning staffs, who helped set this up on all the enablers. They have truly made Balakatan 24 an incredible success, and I look forward to the opportunities and capitalizing on those opportunities that lay off the bow. So thank you very much, and sir, over to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. At the outset, uh, I would like to thank the local government of uh, Ilocos Norte, from the governor to the mayors and the barangay captains for the support that we had for the performance of the exercise. I would like also to thank our staff, support staff, and the exercise directorate. It's been a, uh, I am humbled to observe as the exercise director, and of course to our counterpart, Lieutenant General Journey and Lieutenant General Cedarholm, as a joint task force commander, to the leadership of the AAP for their indulgence and uh, providing that kind of leadership to elevate the output of the exercise. So with that, uh, thank you very much and we thank also the other staff and support staff that uh, were not mentioned earlier. Thank you. Thank you, Major General Likolini, sir. Now we'll proceed with our Q&A. Yes, John Eric of uh, Daily Inquirer. So good morning, uh, John Eric Mendoza from Inquirer. Sir, Defense Secretary Gilberto Teodoro Jr. said that next year's Balikatan will involve a full-scale battle simulation. What does that mean for, the, uh, uh, for your side and uh, will we see uh, the emergence of more, uh, the usage of uh, Typhoon missiles and more live fire exercises? And uh, to whom was this addressed, this full-scale battle simulation scenario? Thank you. The BK-2025, actually this afternoon will be already the start of the planning before our counterparts will uh, go home. And uh, the full battle t test would mean a more demanding exercise. The challenges as a, the ex exercise will be more elevated. It would it require a better force integration, an integration that would be seamless uh, as I've mentioned. Because when we have to perform, there should be no defects already in organization, in policy, in all the aspects that we would do. And the full battle test would mean a test of every capability that we have, not necessarily firing everything, but a test of uh, the operations, a test of our integration as a combined and joint force, the interoperability that we had, those are what we would be testing for next year. Sir? From the U.S. side, and thanks for the question, sir, the, uh, from the 1st Marine Expeditionary Force, which I have the humble privilege of being a part of, this will be a recertification. We certify every two years in the United States to be a joint task force. So right now, the 1st Marine Expeditionary Force, about 45,000 Marines and sailors based across two states and worldwide deployable is a JTF uh, force 
that's, uh, that is certified to go anywhere globally and conduct any mission sets uh, that is required by our national command authority. We'll be doing that recertification next year and all those things that take, uh, are required to build up to that to include command and control, long range precision fires. I think there was a part of your question about more missiles. Uh, can't speak to that yet because we're still, as General Likadini said, still in the planning phases, but we're always seeking to improve our lethality, always seeking to improve long range fires, sensing the battle space and the command and control of that. So that's where we'll be next year. Thank you, gentlemen, for the answer. Do you have any follow-up question, John? Okay. Follow-up question? Does this mean that the Balikata next year will be uh, the biggest? Because this year is already the biggest with over 16,700. So will next, will next year's Balikata uh, be bigger than that? Uh, the bigger does it mean the quantity does it mean the quality. Yeah. But uh, with our, the guidance of my, our counterpart, Lieutenant Chorney, when we planned BK-39, the quality of the training that we had, the improvement on, a, on our capability and our integration, as I've mentioned, that should be the, the parameters of what we would be seeing, not really in quantity, but the uh, quality, because it is where we can be effective and efficient to deliver the kind of result that you, the government, the people would expect us. Sir? Sir, I, I think you shacked the target on that one. Yeah. Quantity is not our desired metric. Quality of training is our desired metric. And we'll build the exercise around delivering exactly that. Again, thank you, gentlemen. Next question will be posted by uh, Patrick Jesus, PT4. Mike, please. Check. Good morning, sirs. Good morning. The Chief of Staff said that uh, preparations for Balikatan will begin immediately later this afternoon. Are you looking forward to invite uh, more countries ne for next year's uh, Balikatan? And what countries uh, are, uh, are possible to join? Thank you, sir. Are we inclined to invite more countries to this particular Balikatan, sir? I think that's what's the question. So uh, I'll, I'll start answering that, that question, and thanks for the question. You know, the, the countries that are invited are obviously, this is a bilateral exercise, but uh, over to uh, the AFP and to our civilian leadership as to the agreements to bring other countries in, that's not our realm. Uh, we welcome all who share the same value set and beliefs in a free and uh, open Indo-Pacific. Uh, we value and, and cherish to operate with those who believe in transparency and the respect of sovereignty. And uh, much like a saying in, our, in the United States, you know, I will work with any man to do good. So we, we are happy to work with any, any nation that shares those values. In regards to the scope and size of that next year, what are some of the improvements? Well, we've already been talking about uh, beyond the U.S. side, and I know the AFP has as well, about what we're looking to test and improve next year. I think it's safe to say that we'll be looking to capitalize on the momentum we've built in the command and control of forces. I think it's safe to say that we'll look to improve and continue the great momentum we have in increasing lethality by sensing the battle space and employing long-range fires. And I think we will also, as part of the battle, full battle test and the one MEF recertification as a joint task force, we will look to increase our interoperability that's ready to go, time now, and ready to handle any adversary that is foolish enough to challenge our shores or our democratic way of life. Sir, over to you. Thank you, sir. Uh, I, think it's, uh, I think it's already well said. But uh, for the Philippine part, uh, I, it's still on the planning stage. This afternoon is a planning stage, but uh, the participation of the Philippines would include, and I believe it will already include other government agencies, more par participation from the Philippine Coast Guard, from the Philippine National Police, from the DFA maybe, and from the ICT. So these uh, other government 
uh, agencies would be included because we're trying to achieve a whole of government approach and a, a whole of people approach when we address certain challenges in the future. Do you have any follow-up question, uh, Patrick? Sir, the India government confirmed recently that the Brahmos arrived here in the country. Are you going to test it in next year's Balikatan? There's no guarantee yet because the exercise uh, for 2025 is still on the planning stage and we still have to get the commit commitment of the different services as to what they can do and what they can perform. So it's still on the planning stage. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you very much, Patrick. Now, our next questions will be posted by uh, Mr. Tan of TDB TBBS uh, Taiwan. Hello, sir. Yeah, um, I'm from Taiwan, and so my concern is about Taiwan also. And, um, you know, the militaries are deploying in the Nyland, Malutvulis Island, uh, near Taiwan, like about 140 kilometers. And has there been consideration given to the prospect of a full-scale war in Balikatan, such as getting involved in Taiwan Strait conflict? Yeah, that's my question, sir. So, just, so would you please yeah, uh, reiterate the questions directly? Yeah. yeah, so I just want to ask, is there any consideration, tactical uh, consideration in Balik Balikatan that uh, may be considering the full-scale war, like such as Taiwan Strait uh, conflict? Yeah. Is there any? Yeah, thank, thanks for that. Uh, we, we do not conduct Balakatan for any third party. We conduct Balakatan to work on our interoperability, to work on our defense of our shores from an external attacker. Uh, all those things that I talked about uh, in the closing ceremonies of defending our shores, commitment to mutual defense treaty that is defensively oriented. Uh, so we don't, we don't talk countries in this. We talk about increasing our capabilities. Uh, just as General Likidini said in one of his previous answers, we're looking to improve our interoperability. We're looking to improve how we communicate. We're looking to improve how we employ fires. That could be against anybody. So that's why we don't substitute names in uh, or conflicts. We don't do it for a third party. We do it because we have a mandate from our respective citizens to field the most lethal and viable fighting force that we can. And so we take the names out of it and we just increase our capability uh, to do exactly that. And sir, I don't know if you have any additional on that. I think the answer is already well said. Thank you. Do you have any follow-up on that, uh, yes. Mr. Tan? Yeah. Uh, further question. Is, so is there any consideration about um, full-scale war in Balikatan exercise this year? You mean a rehearsal on the full-scale war, if ever? Uh, a training exercise means, on a full-scale war? Yeah, full-scale war means um, um, like a war directly for, from external invasion or external conflict in the international areas, like international seas, like that. Yeah. I, I think that if you take a look at a training perspective, sir, uh, you have to approach training and exercises in a building block manner. So the complexity of Balakatan has ratcheted up over the years. This year's Balakatan, Balakatan 39 or 24, based off of your naming convention, right, has been the most complex that we've ever run. Between the live fire exercises, between the maritime strike, which was a huge success, and it was uh, incredible to listen to the guidance and the thoughts of the president uh, and the ambassador. But as far as full-scale war goes, to use your words, you know, we don't, we don't take that approach in training because it would probably be a watered-down approach. I like General Likidini's comments earlier on, you know, we're looking to, in future Balakatans, continue to ratchet up the complexity to meet any type of adversary, whoever that may be. Uh, and also, I like the inclusion that General Likidini said about in starting to include whole of government as we take this building block approach. So we're marching that direction. We're taking a very methodical but expeditious pathway to do that. Uh, so you will find elements of that built in to take on anybody foolish enough to challenge or attack our shores. 
Thank you, sir, for the answer. I think uh, there's the misconstrued idea that a full dark battle test would only mean war. It's not. It's all about preparation for everything that a nation expects. It includes management of uh, civilian populace, the management of uh, the, the, our management for disaster re relief during disasters, those things. And the full battle test would just be a test how we become more interoperable and integrate ourselves in order to face any challenge, just what we have done during the COVID-19 incident, where we had a national lockdown, we have these activities, the AAP, the D Department of Health, everything, every government agency are in the forefront. So it's not just a battle that means war, but all the contingencies and challenges as that the government may face that which we are preparing. That's why we want to achieve a whole of government and a whole of people approach. Thank you very much, sir. Next question will be uh, from uh, Late Kabagani of uh, Daily Tribune. Good morning, sir. This is quite related. Um, it is noted that the Balikatan is other than combat drills. You have um, Balikatan revolved in uh, pushing project related to civil military operations and humanitarian efforts um, during natural or uh, man-made disasters. Uh, my question is, how do CMO projects um, under Balikatan, particularly the construction of, of clinics and schools in Ilocos Norte, uh, could help uh, possible evacuation of re or repatriation of Filipinos or refugees um, in case a war broke out in Taiwan amid the ongoing tension in the area? Well, thank, thanks for that question, ma'am. Uh, what was amazing to me and inspiring to me is yesterday I had a chance to go up to a Locus Norte and do the dedication of a medical clinic that was up there uh, that was one of four engineering capacity projects that were built. So over the course of this Balakatan exercise, uh, in the AFP and the U.S., as well as having uh, international observers uh, and uh, our Australian partners as well, have built two classrooms and two medical facilities that will have a direct impact on 23,000 Filipino citizens. That's heartwarming, that's humbling, and that's an important part of our job and for being here for Balakatan. We've also, at the same time, had an opportunity to train 500 trainers, which will, for decades, go back and selflessly serve their communities in such areas as preventative medicine, firefighting, uh, school supplies we've donated. Uh, so that's, that's a, an amazing and an inspiring number of people that have been, uh, will be the recipients of this year's Balakatan's humanitarian civic activities that have gone on. When you take a look at the dollar figures, that also, you know, it's, it's well approaching a half million dollars that have been built on those four facilities. They will provide benefits for decades to come. And to close that out, what was most inspiring to me yesterday was as we dedicated this medical uh, facility in the Locus Norte, uh, were the children. There were, there were children from the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade there they put on a performance, but what I saw, in addition to their great performance, I saw the future. And I saw how these engineering capacities, these HCA activities, will have an effect into our future. And I'll tell you, looking into their eyes and seeing their, their drive, is, it's inspiring. I think the future is incredibly filled with great things due to their coming up and delivering uh, on these capabilities that they have right now. So it's a, it was a beautiful thing to witness, and I was proud to even be a small part of that. With the huma humanitarian civic action programs under Balikatan, it's uh, practically funded by the U.S. If you've seen the one built in the Locos Norte and Cagayan, 
It's a world class quality of a barangay, barangay health center that would be used by the barangay itself. It's a world class structure at the barangay level. So these opportunities, uh, there is also a guidance from our Secretary of National Defense that the HCA programs, if probably we can put it in some other areas, particularly in Mindanao areas, and that's still a subject of discussion between our U.S. counterparts. So naturally, the Balikatan exercise, it's, it's, it's not just a preparation for, for battle or a conflict, but also the preparation for any challenges, disasters that the country may face in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for last three questions. First of the, of the three is uh, Angie Chen of uh, Central News Agency. Please pass the mic. Hello, good morning, uh, sirs. I would like to ask because I know that there were island, uh, island retaking exercises held in Badanes. And I would like to ask, what was the scenario? Was it to defend a foreign invader, uh, to prevent, to defend uh, this kind of uh, situation happening? Thank you. I think the exercise that was uh, conducted in Batanes. The exercise that was conducted in Batanes is still multi-purpose in role. It may be for emergencies, it may be for island taking, it's still for interoperability and integration between our the PNP, our Special Operations Forces and the U.S. Special Operations Forces going on in that exercise. But the exercise and the intent of that exercise is multi-role, not necessarily for combat or conflict. Okay. Is that fine, uh, Angie? Is that okay? Oh, okay, sir. You may want to add up. Okay, uh, sure. Uh, I thought General Likidini's answer was, was absolutely perfect. I think from a, uh, to pull it up to the more the operational and the strategic level, I think you have a natural inflection point right now between the U.S. and the Philippines as the Philippines switches from internal to external defense. And we heard the secretary, the defense secretary, talk this morning about the comprehensive archipelagic defense concept. I think when that has a natural marrying point and attachment point with the work that the Marine Corps has done on force design to fight uh, in the littorals. So when you talk about key maritime terrain uh, in various islands and operating in the littorals, you have to train to both secure that and defend that. So I think that's what you saw in various parts of this building block approach over the course of Balakatan, both in the north and in the south, as we trained our interoperability to conduct offensive and defensive operations to go take back key maritime terrain that was simulated attack by the simulated enemy uh, for Balakatan 24. So uh, I couldn't be more impressed with what they've done. Uh, we have great opportunities to continue that interoperability, to continue to figure out how to best secure uh, key maritime terrain and operate in the littorals as we both advance our, our advancing uh, defense concepts over time. Thank you and very much, sir. Would you like another follow-up, Angie? Uh, yes. Okay. I would like to ask because I know there were uh, mid-range missiles being deployed during Baligatan, and I would like to ask, uh, what will, will they stay in the Philippines, and what will be the future use of it? Thank you. Yeah, we, we don't discuss force disposition, ma'am. So for operational security reasons, uh, we are in close coordination and compliance with all the, uh, all the uh, guidance from the AFP and the Philippine government. Uh, so, but I'm, I'm not in a position to discuss that. Thank you. Will that be fine with that answer, Angie? Okay, next of the, two, the three questions. Second question will be coming from uh, Kyodo News. May we hear from Maricar Cinco or Ken Sasaki? Thank you. Uh, on, on April... Uh, can you please have the, uh, uh, a better mic? And uh, please speak louder. Uh, yeah. On April 27th, in the Barikatan, 
the AFP saw an opportunity to airdrop to uh, Patag Shaol uh, for the flying uh, mission. And uh, my question is, was there any resupply mission or role uh, conducted uh, during the Barikatan to Ayungin too? Uh, did you find such opportunities during the Barikatan too? Sir, the, the question is that uh, we have conducted an opportunity training for the airdrop at Patag Shoal. And, and, and now uh, they were asking if uh, there was any uh, role conducted at Ayungin Shoal during the Balikatan. I think the, uh, the resupply missions for Ayungin Shoal has always been continuous and it's a mission of the Western Command. But for the resupply mission at the uh, Patag Shoal, it's part of the exercise. There are things that uh, it's part of the exercise, it's limited to the exercise, and some other things that uh, the Western, Western Command took it's all a function and a mission of the Western Command. It's not integrated and it's not related. The exercise, it, it's a separate one. The resupply exercise that was done in Patag Shoal is a separate part of the exercise. It was well planned. And also, uh, the mission of the Western Command, if ever there was, uh, it's highly separate from the exercise. Will that be fine as an answer, uh, Mr. Sasaki? Would you like another follow-up? Thank you very much. The last questions will be posted by uh, Yan Fang Zhu of uh, Phoenix TV. Good morning. I know you, um, you just emphasized quality over quantity, but um, I'm wondering if you could help us understand why specifically in this year's exercise um, the U.S. deployed almost twice as much troops, as many troops as um, the Philippines, 11,000 U.S. troops, as opposed to um, 5,000 uh, AFP personnel. Does it have to do with the uh, ASCs deployed, or maybe it's the subject matter expertise? Uh, from, from the U.S. side, ma'am, uh, we start the planning for, the planning for exercise Balakatan 24 uh, began over a year ago. In that, we take a look at what was the momentum generated in the previous Balakatan exercise? What are the building block approaches that we want to take to training for interoperability, command and control, precision long-range fire, securing key maritime terrain, defending key maritime terrain, and then we put together the force list. So the force list is dependent on the training objectives that we have. Due to the increased complexity and the opportunities to train here, due to the uh, our gracious host also being mo in a process of modernization. We find ourselves on parallel pathways, rising pathways to modernization. So I think the opportunity naturally existed for us to increase the number of troops across those various areas uh, for training in Balakatan 24. Just like uh, it's been referenced by uh, the, the Secretary of Defense, it's been referenced by my good friend General Likidini, that we are starting to plan for BK-25. We'll take a look at the great momentum and gains that we made in this BK-24, and they were momentous, and they were really good, and we'll look to continue to capitalize off of that and build off of that in the future. So I can't tell you uh, what our force structure would look like. I know that wasn't the genesis of your question, but we'll figure out what we need to do to increase our capacity, what we need to in do to increase our quality of training and then we'll mass force structure against that and we'll execute BK-25 with greatness. On the side of the Philippines, uh, Balikatan has always been a progressive. Uh, it's been 38, 39 years now. We'll be going 40 years for next year and the exercise have grown in number, have grown in unit, have improved our capacity and our efficiency. This year's Balikatan may still be the biggest, but uh, next year we cannot yet uh, see that because we have to reassess what happened this year and last year so that we can program the training exercise and our training needs, the AAP's uh, training needs, so that uh, we will be able to really develop as an armed force doing more complex 
things and addressing more complex challenges. Thank you very much. Any follow-up, uh, Jan? No more? Any other questions from our media friends here? I think uh, that will be it, sir. Before I let you go, the two of you, sir, uh, may we request a uh, final statement coming from Lieutenant General Tidham and then followed by Major General Likudini, sir, as uh, our final statements. Well, thank you. I, I'd like to close by saying a, a special thank you to the press. Uh, I know we've had opportunities to uh, meet and engage each other over the course of the last three weeks. Uh, I have found your questions to be well informed, fair, uh, and accurate in reporting. Uh, it's important for us uh, from the U.S. perspective. Uh, we have an a unbreakable bond with the truth. So our transparency, which you've heard me refer to many times, both in the opening, throughout our, our great engagements, and then in our closing ceremonies today, transparency is important to us. It's one of our democratic traits. It's something that we pride ourselves on. It's a vision that we share uh, with the uh, Republic of the Philippines. So I'd just like to say a special thank you for the work that you do in reporting. Uh, my last request would be that you also reference and talk about besides the issues uh, that, are, that are really important, uh, but you also talk about the men and women who have made this exercise a great success. I'm talking about the 18, 19, 20-year-olds who have spent time in the field. I'm talking about your potentially brothers and sisters, your sons and your daughters, our brothers and sisters, our sons and daughters who have been out in the field performing absolutely brilliantly. They deserve a special recognition for their ability and them volunteering to raise their hands, pledge their allegiance to their nations, and their selfless sacrifice, which over the course of this Balakatan has been on full display. I could not be more proud of the men and women of the U.S. Armed Forces. I could be not more, be not more proud of the men and women of the AFP for their conduct, their performance and their professionalism, and I look forward to these continued engagements. And a special thanks to my good friend, General Likudini. Thanks, sir. Over Thank to you. you. Sir. Thank you, sir, for the comprehensive statement. Well, uh, I would thank. I would like to thank the again the local chief executive of the provinces from Ilocos Norte to Palawan, and of course the local leadership and other government agencies that supported Balikatan 2024. I would also thank our U.S. counterparts from the U.S. Marines, Army, Sailors, and the Air Force for the participation and uh, really the Philippine hospitality that they have experienced through their time in Balikatan. I would like to thank also the media for your sacrifices in going to Ilocos Norte, especially with the heat of the sun during the exercises that we had in Ilocos Norte. Thank you very much. And uh, let us always remember that every exercise, every cooperation, the bilateral relations with uh, our counterparts, with the U.S., our multilateral relations with our countries, the exercises, what we do is all about a shared goal and a shared commitment to keep the stability and peace in the region for us to be able to move through economically and grow as a nation. Thank you very much and good morning. A round of applause to our two gentlemen here. Thank you very much, sir. That was a wonderful press conference.